Wolves in sheep's clothing have pulled the wool over our eyes. For almost five hundred years, the masses have been thoroughly deceived by a cosmic fairy tale of astronomical proportions. We have been taught a falsehood so gigantic and diabolical that it has blinded us from our own experience and common sense, from seeing the world and the universe as they truly are. Through pseudoscience books and programs, mass media and public education, universities and government propaganda, the world has been systematically brainwashed, slowly indoctrinated over centuries into the unquestioning belief of the greatest lie of all time. David Wardlaw Scott said, Children's are taught in their geography books, when too young to apprehend or write the meaning of such things, that the world is a great globe revolving around the sun, and the story is repeated continuously year by year till they reach maturity, at which time they generally become so absorbed in other matters as to be indifferent as to whether the teaching be true or not, and, as they hear of nobody contradicting it, they presume that it must be the correct thing, if not to believe, at least to receive it as a fact. They thus tacitly give their assent to a theory which, if it had first been presented to them at what are called years of discretion, they would at once have rejected. The consequences of evil teaching, whether in religion or in science, are far more disastrous than is generally supposed, especially in a luxurious, laissez-faire age like our own. The intellect becomes weakened, and the conscience seared. For five hundred years, an elite cabal of sun worshippers has propagated this nihilistic, atheistic cosmology and cosmogony, unquestioningly believed by the vast majority of the world. We have been taught, contrary to all common sense and experience, that the seemingly motionless, flat earth beneath our feet is actually a massive, moving ball spinning through space at over a thousand miles per hour wobbling and tilted 23.5 degrees on its vertical axis, while orbiting the sun at a blinding 67,000 miles per hour, in concert with the entire solar system, spiraling 500,000 miles per hour around the Milky Way, and careening across the expanding universe away from the Big Bang at an incredible 670 million miles per hour, but that you can feel and experience none of it. We have been taught that a mysterious force called gravity, a magical magnetism responsible for keeping everything from falling or flying off the spinning ball earth, is just strong enough to hold people, oceans, and the atmosphere tightly to the surface, but just weak enough to allow bugs, birds, and planes to take off with ease. David Wardlaw Scott wrote, I remember being taught when a boy that the earth was a great ball revolving at a very rapid rate around the sun, and when I expressed to my teacher my fears that the waters of the oceans would tumble off, I was told that they were prevented from doing so by Newton's great law of gravitation, which kept everything in its proper place. I presume that my countenance must have shown some signs of incredulity, for my teacher immediately added, I can show you a direct proof of this. A man can whirl around his head a pail filled with water without its being spilt, and so, in like manner, can the oceans be carried round the sun without losing a drop. As this illustration was evidently intended to settle the matter, I then said no more upon the subject. Had such been proposed to me afterwards as a man, I would have answered somewhat as follows. Sir, I beg to say that the illustration you have given of a man whirling a pail of water round his head and the oceans revolving round the sun, does not in any degree confirm your argument, because the water in the two cases is placed under entirely different circumstances, but, to be of any value, the conditions in each case must be the same, which here they are not. The pail is a hollow vessel which holds the water inside it, whereas, according to your teaching, the earth is a ball, with a continuous curvature outside, which, in agreement with the laws of nature, could not retain any water. We have been taught that the ball earth spins at a constant velocity, perfectly dragging the atmosphere along so we cannot feel the slightest bit of motion, perturbation, wind, or air resistance. 
They say we cannot feel any of this motion because the magical velcro of gravity pulls the atmosphere precisely along, and we cannot measure any of this motion because the stars are so incredibly far away that over a hundred million miles of supposed annual orbit around the sun amounts to not a single inch of relative parallax change. How convenient. We have been taught that the apparent orbit of the sun, planets, and stars, but not the moon, around the earth are all optical illusions, that it is in fact the earth beneath our feet which moves, and our eyes that deceive us. Special exception is made for the moon, however, which is said to revolve around the earth just as it appears. Since we only ever see one side of the moon, we have been taught this is because the moon's supposed 10.3 mile per hour west to east rotation, combined with its 2,288 mile per hour orbit of Earth, just happens to be the exact motion and speed necessary to perfectly cancel out the Earth's supposed 1,000 mile per hour east to west rotation and 67,000 mile per hour orbit of the Sun, thereby creating the perpetual dark side of the moon illusion. Oh really? Though the sun and moon appear to be relatively small, equal-sized bodies revolving around a stationary earth, we have been taught that this too is an optical illusion, and they are in fact thousands of miles divergent in diameter. They say the sun is actually a whopping 865,374 miles across, 109 times wider than the earth, and contrary to all experience, experiments, and common sense, that we revolve around it. They say the moon is 2,159 miles across, a quarter the size of the earth, and why they appear the same size is because the moon is only 238,000 miles away, while the sun is an unfathomable 93 million miles away from the earth. And these just happen to be the exact diameters and distances necessary for a viewer from Earth to falsely perceive them as being the same size. You don't say. Lacantius, in his On the False Wisdom of the Philosophers, wrote, A sphere where people on the other side live with their feet above their heads, where rain, snow, and hail fall upwards, where trees and crops grow upside down, and the sky is lower than the ground? The ancient wonder of the hanging gardens of Babylon dwindle into nothing in comparison to the fields, seas, towns, and mountains that pagan philosophers believe to be hanging from the earth without support. David Wardlaw Scott wrote, I confess that I cannot imagine how any human being, in his proper senses, can believe that the sun is stationary when, with his own eyes, he sees it revolving around the heavens, nor how he can believe that the earth on which he stands is whirling with the speed of lightning around the sun when he feels not the slightest motion. We have been taught that those tiny pinpricks of light in the night sky known as planets or wandering stars are actually physical, globular, earth-like habitations millions of miles away. We have even been shown supposed video footage of the one called Mars, we have been taught that the tiny pinpricks of light in the sky known as the fixed stars are actually distant suns trillions of miles away, each complete with their own solar systems, orbiting moons, and Earth-like planets which potentially harbor alien life. We have been taught that the moon has no light of its own, but is merely a reflector of the sun's light, that some masons from NASA actually walked on the moon, that some other masons from NASA sent rovers to Mars, that satellites and space stations are incessantly spinning in suspended animation above the Earth, that Hubble telescopes are taking snapshots of distant planets, galaxies, stars, quasars, black holes, wormholes, and other fantastic celestial phenomena. We have been taught that our ignorant ancient ancestors for millennia falsely believed the Earth to be the flat, immovable center of the universe. But thanks to modern science and its Masonic prophets like Copernicus, Newton, Galileo, Collins, Aldrin, and Armstrong, we now believe the world to be a giant, whirling sea-earth globe careening through infinite space. Thomas Winship wrote, 
Modern astronomical teaching affirms that the world we live on is a globe which rotates, revolves, and spins away in space at brain-reeling rates of speed, that the sun is a million and a half times the volume of the earth globe and nearly a hundred million miles distant from it, that the moon is about a quarter the size of the earth, that it receives all its light from the sun, and is thus only a reflector and not a giver of light, that it attracts the body of the earth and thus causes the tides, that the stars are worlds and suns, some of them equal in importance to our own sun himself, and others vastly his superior, that these worlds inhabited by sentient beings are without numbers and occupy space boundless in extent and illimitable in duration, the whole of these interlaced bodies being subject to and supported by universal gravitation, the foundation and father of the whole fabric. To fanciful minds and theoretical speculators, the so-called science of modern astronomy furnishes a field unsurpassed in any science for the unrestrained license of the imagination, and the building up of a complicated conjuration of absurdities such as to overawe the simpleton and make him gape with wonder, to deceive even those who truly believe their assumptions to be facts. We have been taught that science books like Newton's Principia Mathematica, which propound the spherical heliocentric myth, are the bearers of truth, while backwater religious books like the Bible, which propound a flat geocentric earth, are merely outdated myths. We have been taught that the universe was unintelligently designed and randomly created in a cosmic coincidence of nothing inexplicably becoming everything. We have been taught that, through millions upon millions of years of accidental evolution and happenstance, the Big Bang universe began manifesting suns, moons, planets, then water, then somehow out of dead, inert elements, single-celled conscious organisms came to life, grew and multiplied and mutated into larger, different organisms, which continued to grow, multiply, and mutate, gaining diversity and complexity, and losing credibility, to the point where amphibians crawled up on land, replaced gills with lungs, started breathing air, maturated into mammals, became bipedal, grew opposable thumbs, evolved into monkeys, then in one final fluke adaptation, a hybrid monkey man was made and the rest is human history. Thomas Winship wrote, put together all the imaginary exploits in the air specially written to interest the young, Add to this all the wonderful adventures of airships recorded in the daughter of the revolution, and tack on to this all the wild and impossible things found in current libraries of fiction, and I venture to say that the grand total will record nothing so utterly impossible or so supremely ridiculous as this modern scientific delusion of a globe spinning away in space in several different directions at the same time at rates of speed which no man is able to grasp, with the inhabitants some hanging heads down and others at various angles to suit the inclination, Write down all the swindles that ever were perpetrated. Name all the hoaxes you ever heard or read about. Include all of the impostures and bubbles ever exposed. Make a list of all the snares that popular credulity could ever be exposed to, and you will fail in getting within sight or hearing of an imposture so gross, a hoax so ingenious, or a bubble of such gigantic proportions as has been perpetrated and forced upon unthinking multitudes in the name of science and as proved incontrovertible fact by the expounders of modern astronomy. Again and again have their theories been combated and exposed, but as often have the majority who did not think for themselves accepted the popular thing. We have been taught that the height of stupidity and naivety was when our ignorant ancestors believed the earth to be flat and that if any man somehow still thinks the earth to be the immovable center of the universe, that they must be the most primitive kind of ignoramus. Nowadays, the label flat earther has become literally synonymous with moron, and is a common cliché derogatory term for insulting someone's intelligence. Upon seeing a book titled The Flat Earth Conspiracy, your ingrained instinct was likely to laugh, mock the messenger, and deny the very possibility. Marshall Hall said, what strikes you as being some thoughts that people would have if, in the short space of a few weeks, the universally held conviction that the Earth rotates on an axis daily and orbits the Sun annually were exposed as an unscientific deception? 
Keep in mind that a rotating, orbiting Earth is not counted as a mere hypothesis or even a theory anywhere in the world today. Oh no. Rather, this concept is an unquestioned truth, an established fact in all books and other media everywhere, church media included. Copernicanism, in short, is a concept that is protected in a bunker under a 50-foot thick ceiling of solid scientific concrete. It is meant to be impregnable. It is a concept that has become ensconced in men's minds as the indestructible cornerstone of enlightened modern man's knowledge. Virtually all people everywhere have been taught to believe, and do believe, that this concept is based on objective science and dispassionate secular reasoning. B. Chasbro wrote, 99 people out of a hundred would give the same answer to the interrogation, and that same answer would be to the effect that the earth is a globe which revolves around the sun. The 99 who makes this reply would do it because they know it to be the case. How do they know it? Let this question be put to them, and they will bestow upon you a withering smile of pity at what they conceive to be an imbecility of mind on your part, and answer you in something like the following style. It has always been so. We learnt it at school. Clever men say so. And look how astronomers can foretell eclipses, and then lose their temper at the very idea of the globular theory being incorrect. And a haughty, there can be no doubt about it, will close all they have to say on the subject. Now if the ears of these ninety-nine could only be gained, they would be shown, in an irresistible manner, that the philosophy which would speak of a round and revolving world is a false philosophy.